Hello, welcome back. So, earlier we covered what you needed to do to structure your business and to start the zoning process. Now we're gonna cover in this module what happens after your zoning approval is approved. So, congratulations. Now that you found out that yes, you can have an assisted living facility at this property, now, if you were purchasing a new property, go ahead and execute your contract and proceed with your closing as you plan. If you were uh, going to do the assisted living in a property that you already have, now you know that you can begin the process. Finding out you are zoned for assisted living in an ideal property is so exciting. You get to really go out there and make a good living for yourself while you are making good for the community. It only makes you feel good and you're your own boss. You are in control of your income. It is the best place to be. So now time is of the essence because at this point, you're going to be working with contractors. Working with contractors, you have to make sure that they do what they're supposed to do. You have to make sure that you go behind them and double check. You have to make sure that they are pulling the permits and you have to make sure that they are satisfying whatever additional information that the city need in order to close the permits. How do you do this? Well, a simple email to City Hall or phone call to City Hall. And the way that you know they actually pull permits is the fact that you have to pay for the permit. Every single permit that they pull, you have to pay for that. Now your job is to make sure that your zoning time period is protected. Some cities will give you a time frame that your zoning is valid for in which that they will hold that distance for you. Meaning for that time frame, whether it's 90 days or six months, whatever that time frame is, it will be stated in your zoning request letter along with how many residents that you can have. Now making sure that your contractors are doing the right thing and that they are not slacking is part of your responsibility to make sure that you are licensed as soon as possible because Unless you are licensed, you are losing money. Money you could have been making, money that you're paying uh, to maintain the property, even though if you wanna talk about this, that there are ways that you can make some money in the property while you're getting these things done. Do not let it just sit collecting dust, okay? I cover that in the full course of the how to open an assisted living from start to finish. And your contractors, exactly what are they going to do for you? Your contractors are going to install your fire sprinklers, your fire alarm, your generator installations. And all of these things require permits. They're also going to install your reserve gas tank. And all of that is going to need a permit. So in this module, you have been zoned. Congratulations. We learned how to properly work with contractors. We learned that you are going to need fire sprinkler, fire alarm generator, whether you use a portable generator or stationary generator. I cover that in more details in the full ALF course. And you also learned that there is a time frame to the zoning, but most cities do not give you a time frame. So we want to be responsible and we want to hurry up and get licensed as early as possible. So therefore you want to work with someone who have been there, done that, and knows the process exactly for the state of Florida. I am your someone. And I have heard so many horror stories of people who started doing uh, major installations, who spent so much money in the process without knowing whether or not they're licensed for assisted living and only to find out after they have spent so much money that they in fact cannot have an assisted living at that ideal property. 
I have also heard of horror stories of people who thought contractors were actual contractors when in fact they were not. They were crooks. They pretend to pull permits when in fact they don't. So now you know exactly how to deal with them. Make sure you do your research, find out if they are licensed or not. Make sure you call the city and find out if they have pull permits, that they are satisfying these permits. Make sure you do not give them the full money up front. Do payment installations with them. Give them a deposit as little as possible and pay them at the end. Let them be rewarded for working as fast and as efficiently as possible in getting you um, the professional type of work that you deserve. So we cover in this module how to deal with contractors and I'm excited to see you on the next module and I cannot wait to help you open. See you soon.